Hello, I'm Bob Morgan with the VeneerFactoryOutlet.com and today we're going to talk about how to glue a wood veneer to a substrate. Generally speaking it's going to be a wooden substrate. Um, it can be a wooden substrate, it can be an MDF which is a medium density fiber board, it might be a plywood, um, could even be a particle board. Um, and we're going to use wood glue today to do this. Uh, specifically today I think we're going to use a Type Bond 2 which is really kind of a standard glue nowadays for woodworkers. A lot of people use it. Um, you could use a Type Bond even. A Type Bond is just more or less Type Bond 1. It's a little less expensive. But you're only talking for oh this is about 16 fluid ounces. Uh, you're probably talking 7 or 8 dollars for this. Uh, or you could even go to a Type Bond 3, be a little bit more expensive. Uh, it's just a little bit more waterproof maybe. Um, you probably never need to worry about waterproof. But uh, the Type Bond 2 is water resistant. Um, and like I say, a Type Bond 1 would work. So anyway, um, we generally recommend to our customers to think about three ways to glue wood veneers down. The first way would be um, peel and stick adhesive, which is an optional feature that we supply with all of our uh, paper-backed and wood-backed veneers. Um, that's a great way to go because it's easy and quick and uh, you just almost can't, can't lose. Uh, second good method is to use a good grade of contact cement and a couple coats of contact cement on each surface. Um, and a third way that we recommend is to use a glue like this, woodworker's glue. Now you may have heard of all kinds of different ways to glue wood veneers down, including vacuum presses. It's a good method, a very good method, nothing wrong with it. Um, basically the same principle as what we're going to do today. Or maybe you've heard of the uh, hot glue method, which is a good way to go too if you're experienced and you have the equipment. You may have heard of, um, you could even glue it with an epoxy. Um, there's even some manufacturing processes that are really great that you could use. Um, for example, when we glue our veneers at the factory, we use a, a hot, real hot press under pressure with a Tigo glue and um, it works great. But today we're going to talk about this method, which is the, probably the best method of the three that I recommend, but it's also the messiest. A little bit maybe a little bit more difficult because of the factor that it is kind of messy. Now, um, today we have a woodback glue that I've cut to size. This is going to be the substrate. This is a plywood substrate today. Now, um, this is the wooden back here. This is the wooden front veneer here, which is a, an oak. And this wood veneer, wood back veneer, is about 3 64ths of an inch thick and it's a real nice good veneer. Uh, it'll cut with a razor blade quite easily. Uh, it cuts with the scissors even. Kind of like this. This is a wood back veneer that I'm cutting. Now, of course the other way that you could do this is with a paperback veneer. This is a paperback veneer. It's a little bit bigger. Our veneers come anywhere all the way up to eight feet long and four feet wide. This happens to be cherry veneer here. It's nice cherry. The back is paper. You can see it's paperback is about a 64th inch thick. And the paperback veneers are, they bend more, a little bit more. They're flexible. Sometimes that comes in real handy because you might want to put this veneer on a concave or a concave surface. And uh, so when you need to do that, the paperback veneers work, are great. Now, let's just talk about something that's real important. What's real important is water. Water and a damp rag. And for the uninitiated, let me tell you right now, if you get glue on your veneer surface, you want to wipe it off right now. This tight bond glue and most woodworkers glues are water-based and so you can use a damp rag and water to take care of any glue seepage that might get onto your surface. You try to avoid that. It just um, the finishes that we use, there's no finish that I've ever found that likes glue. And once the glue is dry, you have a real, real problem getting it off that surface. So keep that in mind. Um, 
I'm gonna use a brush today. I've got some glue right here that I've put in. I'm gonna use a, just a cheap brush. You could use a roller to do this with. Um, and uh, if particularly on a larger surface, it might be appropriate. So this is a little bit of a messy process maybe at times, particularly with a larger veneer, larger air surface area. And the larger the area, you want to work a little fast because you, the glue will start to set up a little bit on you. So, all right, so what you do is you're going to put a coat of, you're going to put a coat of the glue onto the backside of the veneer itself and get it on there is so all you got to do and I mean like I say I'm using a cheap brush that's fairly stiff bristles and you could clean this out with water when you're done or for that matter you could throw the brush away bear in mind you want to make sure that you don't skimp around the edges make sure you get them those are an area that sometimes people kind of don't pay enough attention to. And you can see this is sort of thick, a little bit, a little bit thick. One of the tricks about putting glue, a uh, gluing a veneer is that um, you want to get enough glue, you want to get enough glue, but you don't want to get too much glue. So, okay, so what does that mean? Well, I'm not sure what it means. I mean, what it means is, use your common sense. Enough glue, but not too much glue. Too much glue will cause a lot of squeeze out. Once you, This is going to be clamped and put under pressure. Um, now, I might put a little bit too much glue on here today, you know, because maybe I would like to illustrate um, what happens when you clamp it and you get some squeeze out. Um, now, too much glue actually isn't going to give you the best glue bond. And, of course, too little glue isn't going to give you the best glue bond. So. Once again, I'm getting these edges, and any little stuff that gets on here, I'm going to get rid of it, like so. I think I got a little bit of a thick coat here today. It's not too bad. Um, okay, so I'm done with that. Set that off the side. My fingers have gotten a little bit, a little bit of glue on them. I don't want this, I don't want any of this glue to get on the surface of my veneer. So I'm going to prevent that right now with my, my water. Take this, move it. Get this, get this out of the way. And what I'm going to do here is I am going to Put this veneer right down on top of that substrate. You notice that the veneer today is larger all the way around than the substrate itself. In this case it's plywood. Could be an MDF, could be particle board. You want to make sure that your substrate and your, of course your veneer is always going to be clean on the back side because it comes right from our factory but the substrate you don't want any dirt or grease that that'll that'll kill your glue bond um, substrate has to be clean so uh, it's going to have to be a bare wood surface or a bare MDF whatever whatever you're using um, you don't have to sand it ahead of time or anything now okay so the, the trick is pressure you got to get pressure everywhere good pressure everywhere and so you sandwich this uh, between a couple of boards. And in this case, I'm going to put some wax paper right down there in case I get some glue coming out somewhere. And let me see if I can find another piece of wax paper somewhere. Well, there it is. 
put it down on the bottom side and I'm going to put my other piece of wax paper right here and I'm going to sandwich it. You can see that this, this board that I've picked here is a what I'm going to apply pressure in a minute with C-clamps you'll see. This is a nice thick piece of flat plywood. Um, you want flat. You want thick and you want flat. Uh, MDF is great too. This is a good grade of plywood so it's not wavy, warpy, and crazy like some of the plywoods that you might come across so that's why I picked this. But if you get a good nice flat piece of MDF that'll work too. So you sandwich that, okay, you have that plywood top, wax paper, you got your veneer and your substrate here, and you have a piece of plywood on the bottom, okay, or an MDF or something that's good and stout, good and thick. You sandwich all that together, like so, and then don't forget, pressure is the key, pressure, pressure. So what I'm going to do is, I've got my C-clamps here, I'm going to clamp this down real good and tight. And I'll give you a little story. When I was first doing my woodworking way back in the day, I decided that I was going to put a car battery on top of a, an inset panel on a door that I was making for a stereo cabinet. And you know, car batteries are heavy, aren't they? So I, I decided I'd clamp it with weight. And guess what? Didn't work, and I had a problem because there was a little void. What you want to do is, you want this sandwiched contraption to be dead flat and under lots of pressure. Now, just for brevity here today, I've used two C clamps. If I were working on this project and I had six or eight C clamps, I'd use every single one of them. I'd at least get another one here and another one here. That'd be the bare minimum. So the key is pressure. Now, it takes about 24 hours for this glue to set up under this pressure and when you're done uh, it will be bonded down so tight that it'll never come up. Um, I have prepared uh, another clamped up arrangement about four hours ago and it's ready to come out for the purposes of this video. Uh, this, the glue will actually set up quicker than 24 hours, but you really don't want to take it out, generally speaking. You can get away with it. Uh, I'm going to unclamp this here, show you what it's like once you're done. Now, you're looking at some vintage C-clamps here. These are older than I am. I bought these when I was about 21, 22 years old. I used to haunt the woodworkers' auctions and stuff. I have all kinds of old tools that I bought and I've used in my shop. These are some of the nice good old ones that give you a really good feeling, you know? Better than the new stuff. So, now you can see we got, you have this that was clamping it down with the pressure and you got your wax paper. Now, the, by the way, the wax paper, if you get any glue squeeze out, you don't want that glue running around and getting on areas that might stick together or whatever. So that's why you put the wax paper in there. I put it on each side. So here you go. You can see this is the bottom. That is glued real nice, but guess what happened? Well, we have a lot of glue squeeze out, don't we? I'm kind of glad that I had my wax paper in there because it might have prevented some problems. So, but, man, do I have a good, nice this is glued down very nicely. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim this off of here. The use of uh, this kind of glue, this method, really is the best gluing method that you can do. Um, it's actually the cheapest um, for the home woodworker. But it's also kind of the messiest. Now, you notice that my veneer is larger all the way around then the substrate. Well that's because now I get to trim it and I get to be perfect because it will perfectly fit. So trim that right off of there. Got quite a bit of glue squeeze out here today. 
guess what? I can see a little bit of glue. I'm going to get rid of that glue right now. I want that glue on my sub on the surface of my veneer whatsoever. It's just something that I don't want. Veneer, any kind of wood, and because veneer is wood for sure. Um, but wood and glue and finish just don't mix. So you prevent your problems. Prevent your problems. If you get glue on your hands or your fingertips, which you will, get it off because you'll end up transferring that glue to the to the wooden surface. So here we are. That's a little bit stubborn. Voila! You have a perfectly veneered, very flat, very nice item here and you're ready for your finish. So now you might wonder, well what what am I gonna do for the finish? How do you how do you put a finish on this? And then the short answer is real simple. You put a finish on a wood veneer the same exact way you would put a finish on any wooden surface. Same way. That's a short answer. For more information on that, see I may have a little bit of glue that got on right there. Get that off of there. For more information, um, I've prepared a tutorial and a video on how to apply finishes, specifically mostly just varnishes because that's really a common way to do it. And um, so that's it for today. Hope you've learned something and I'm Bob Morgan for the Veneer Factory Outlet.com.